Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS show that just happens to come at you around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on the main sites. This is a Champions League breakdown for the second leg of the round of 16, April 16th and 17th, Tuesday and Wednesday, 2019. So, quick couple notes. Obviously, this is a two day four game slate so make sure to adjust your bankroll accordingly so you don't overindulge on uh, today's afternoon slate and find yourself in any way short for uh, your nighttime slates and second of all obviously two day slate make sure to get the Wednesday game in your late flex spot so let's jump in check out the schedule first game on the slate we have Man United making the trip from England into Spain to play Barcelona second game of the slate we have Ajax making the trip from Amsterdam into Italy to play Juventus. Third game of the slate, we have Liverpool making the trip into Portugal to play Porto. And final game of the slate, we have Spurs making the really quick trip uh, up north into Manchester to play Manchester City. So yeah, let's just jump into this right away. First game of the slate, we have Manchester United traveling to Barcelona. And in a lot of games this slate, for the most part, the away games, uh, or excuse me, away teams have been poor in their away games, and the home teams have been much better in their home games. Uh, for United, they're riding a four straight away game streak with at least three total goals, and in seven of their 12 previous games uh, with uh, Solskjaer involved, uh, they've seen three total goals as well. Uh, and Barcelona hasn't lost at home since 2013 in the Champions League. They've won 20 of their previous 30. Champions League games. 16 of the previous 20 games have seen at least three total goals. And over the re weekend, they rested absolutely everyone. Uh, they've had a lot of issues away from home, but at home, much better team. So that's really the cash script for this slate. Now, in terms of a GPP, there's really only one way to use Man United this slate for GPP, and that's a and it's some sort of defensive. And a lot of that is just taking David De Gea. Uh, um, and even then, I, I'm really not too keen in on it. You're basically just chasing the narrative that Man United will make another massive upset because they really haven't shown anything to suggest that they should come away with the result this slate. Ashley Young took 11 crosses last slate, and absolutely none of them connected for a chance creation. So if you're using them in FanDuel, that's worth nothing. So it really wasn't worthwhile. And even Luke Shaw, when he's up against someone who's uh, really good, he tends to just be really bad. So I'm not looking too far outside of De Gea, uh, and at the same time, I'm really not too interested because he doesn't have any solid uh, GPP stacking options. Now into the midfield, you can chase a Pogba penalty shot from 6.9K. I have heard of crazier things, but at the same time, uh, it is Barcelona at home, and you kind of are looking for some sort of ceiling to really make that ownership he's still going to get worthwhile because a lot of people are going to see 6.9K and just think it's a shoe-in. Hopefully it doesn't get people paid this late, but wait and see. And in terms of the forward, there's just no ceiling to really chase. Uh, in terms of uh, Rashford, uh, his salary is super appealing, but... Uh, Lukaku basically doesn't get more than his goals worth the fantasy points. So I'm just not interested in that. Uh, now jumping over quickly to the Barcelona side of things. This slate, I'm just not interested in spending up for goaltender. But if you were going to... Ter Stegen is probably one of my two favorite expensive goaltender goaltender options for this slate. Uh, you can stack him with Jordi Alba, but I definitely prefer uh, Semedo uh, for GPP or cash. Really, uh, just saving that extra money, I think, uh, sets you apart this slate, and he should get the full ninety minutes as he was rested on the weekend. Now, as you go into the midfield. Uh, generally, I try to play Messi in the forward slot if I can, uh, but. Uh, you can use Coutinho in GPP. I'm not as geared in uh, as some other options, especially at 7.8K. Uh, but he is viable. But, uh, yeah, mainly you want to get Messi into your cash cards. Again, this like Messi at home is just a different beast. Uh, so I'm really keyed into that and uh, see what you can make of uh, using Messi over Ronaldo this slate. I know obviously it didn't work out last slate, but I'm much more uh, in favor of this slate. Honestly, 
Um, Luis Suarez and him, who make for an excellent GPP stack again this slate, connected within minutes last slate. And if Luke Shaw didn't nick it with his uh, knee, it would have went in anyways, and uh, they would have uh, literally been off the mark quicker than anyone else. So, yeah, I don't hate that for GPP rolling with those two, uh, and maybe uh, this four as a whole. Uh, but uh, getting uh, Messi and one of the wingbacks into cash is pretty uh, a strong start for this slate. Uh, for a final score here, I will say uh, Barcelona will score more than two. Man United shouldn't score more than one. So I'll say a 3-1-2-1 final score for Barcelona. Next game on the slate, we have Ajax making the trip into Juventus. Uh, so this is a lot of uh, the same. Uh, this is kind of default for Ajax, however. They've simply just been incredible at home and not as incredible away. Uh, they've scored in all but four of their ga games this season, all competitions, and they la they were last shut out in August. Uh, they've scored eight goals in their previous three games versus Bayern and Real Madrid and 17 goals in their previous nine games. However, they've only kept one clean sheet all season, which kind of goes to the Anana script, which we'll talk about shortly. And in terms of Juventus, they are coming into this with the 1-1 draw, uh, so they do have the away goal advantage. They haven't lost at home since November, uh, which happened to be in the Champions League to Manchester United. They've won 12 of their previous 13 games since that defeat. However, they have conceded in three of their previous six home games. So they haven't been perfect, and Ajax has just been the next level of impressive. So a lot of this really has to do with how you foresee the game playing out. Uh, Basically, Ajax need two goals, so they're going for this. Uh, that's going to open them up to a lot of Ronaldo. Uh, so I, I don't necessarily uh, hate the Juventus side for cash, uh, but uh, for uh, Ajax, I think you can go either way here. I'm not interested in Onana. Uh, you probably want some Veltman in your cash this slate. It sounds like he should be getting the 90-minute start for Taglifico. Uh, so, by all means, get Veltman in there. And uh, by all means, this slate, you're locking in uh, Zayek for 8.7K. Uh, he's back to a salary that isn't astronomically untouchable. Uh, so I have no issue using two different Ajax players this late. Using the pair of them with Ronaldo at the same time, if you can somehow afford that. Uh, that's why I kind of prefer the Messi side, just to diversify, diversify a bit in cash. Uh, but in terms of a GPP, you can absolutely game stack this game. Uh, I, I do like goals. Uh, now, uh, yeah, I'm not interested in Onana. He's way too much risk. 4.1K, not my favorite cheap keeper option of the slate. I already talked on Veltman. Uh, I touched on uh, Zayek. Uh, I, Shone isn't good enough against better teams to really show off if he happens to hit the ceiling and doesn't really find a floor. And Tadic, you're basically paying the exact same thing except uh, 500 less uh, for no floor and no comparable ceiling to Zayek. So Zayek head over heels over Tadic, that's for sure, and get uh, Zayek and Veltman into your cash cards this slate. Now in terms of Juventus, it's always the same suspects. They haven't been good enough at the back to, again, warrant paying more uh, for someone like Chesney, who isn't the type of skill set keeper you should be looking for. Cancelo is a little bit too expensive. I'm not necessarily interested. Falls into the same spot as uh, Chesney. And Sandro hasn't been viable enough in DFS for quite some time now to ever pay off his salary. Now, as we go into the midfield, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Juan Crado is uh, not eligible for Champions League, so he's out. Costa is going to be seeing 30 minutes. That means someone is coming off, and chances are Bernadeschi, Pianic will both be starting, and Diablo will also be coming off the bench, probably for Bernadeschi. Uh, so I don't necessarily see Ronaldo coming off the field, but everyone else stands a chance to. 
Uh, so with uh, Mandu Mandzukic out too, that's going to add another 90-minute uh, frame. That it, A lot of this has to do with the starting lineup. Check their bench, see who is playing where. And if they simply don't have enough subs for to take everyone off, you can start to take a little bit more risk on Juventus forwards because, like I said, Ajax should concede uh, probably a couple times here. This is the issue for Ajax. If they concede once, they're basically done because then they need three goals in order to beat Juventus and that's just a little bit too much to ask for uh, so yeah a uh, final score I see probably a 2-1 Juventus win maybe even a 1-1 a draw a uh, 3-1 Juventus win I'll be very surprised if Juventus score more than two goals and I'll be surprised if Ajax is kept off the cle is kept off the uh, kept off the board so I'll say a 2-1 Juventus final win and Juventus advances along with Barcelona Next game on the slate, we have Liverpool traveling to Porto. And this is a humdinger of a game. I'm really excited about this. So, basically, Liverpool is going to draw tons of ownership because they're Liverpool. And they're in the title race. And people think this and that and the other thing. The fact is, is that they've been absolutely atrocious this Champions League away from home. They've won only four of their previous nine away games in all competitions. They lost all three of their group stage away games. And they barely beat Bayern away during uh, the last knockout stage. Uh, it took a 270-minute uh or, or, or past 70 minute goals excuse me in order for them to find a result so yeah Liverpool is just there for the taking when they're away from home and Porto on the other hand is comparably perfect at home uh, they've lost only one of their previous eight games all competitions which happened to be two Liverpool only two losses this Champions League season both of them came away from home and they've lost only one of their previous 22 home games in all competitions so yeah we're looking at arguably one of the better home teams of this slate against arguably the worst home team of the slate but the or excuse me against arguably the worst away team of the slate but this away team is still going to draw obscene amounts of ownership so yeah uh the first place you m think about starting is Casillas. I am a little bit concerned about Liverpool's shot counts, but at the same time I'm also concerned about Liverpool even finding results. So I don't hate Casillas, just to get that out of the way. Uh, but yeah, I'm not interested in Allison. A little bit too much risk uh, for 5.1k away from home. You can use Trent Alexander-Arnold. I don't see any reason why not. Uh, the only other reason why not, I'll be talking about literally in the very next team. Uh, but if you want to use a, a high-end defender, it's definitely Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh, no question, 100% get him into your cards. Now, in terms of the midfield, uh, I'm just not very interested uh, Kieda has been playing well, but at the same time, he's old news at this point. And if you haven't bought into him in the Champions League following English Premier League result, it's, it's probably too late because they're going to draw so much ownership away home. It just makes no sense to chase this midfield. And then as we get up front, um, maybe a Salah penalty shot, but like he really hasn't been plugging for quite some time now. I think. Double digits is now the question. That's a pretty solid bet. But when you're looking at guys like Messi and Ronaldo who aren't even that pushed to finish past 20 this slate, I'm really not that interested. Uh, now, Liverpool may straight sleep on this one. It really wouldn't surprise me to see a lot of sleep on Wednesday. And what I mean by sleep is they just aren't going to try. They're ahead. They're winning quite handily. And they don't need to win. Uh, so a draw is the most likely result here for me, which is why I like Casillas so much. Now, to further that, uh, Tellus is someone you're probably going to want into your cards this slate, 4.6K. He's got the floor. He's got all the ceiling that any player has. And he only costs 4.6K at home with low ownership. So, yeah, make sure you get Alex Tellus into your cash cards predominantly this slate. It'll open up a little bit of space for what keeper you want to use, uh, whether it's uh, going the Barcelona route uh, or uh, maybe, uh, yeah, th that's probably... 
where I'd keep that, either Barcelona or Porto. Uh, now, jumping into uh, the midfield, Corona starting to see 90 minutes, which isn't the worst thing, but it sacrificed Herrera, who didn't see the field uh, at all. So that's a little bit of a concern. Uh, I, so I, I would rather, if anyone in GPP, stick with Moraga, 7.3K. Not a lot of risk from that salary at home going up against Liverpool, who couldn't even find a result against Red Star Belgrade. Uh, so yeah, final score here, I'm going to say 1-1 draw. Maybe even Porto sneaks out a 1-0 uh, 2-1 win and ends up advancing. Uh, I doubt that will happen. They'll, they'll need a little bit more than that, obviously. But uh, it, it, uh, it really would surprise me here to see Liverpool not win this game. So that's my prediction. Liverpool will not win 1-1 draw final score. Final game of the slate, we have Spurs traveling to Man City. And this is another really uh, interesting game. Spurs have lost six of their seven previous away games, all competitions. City, on the other hand, has won 14 of their 16 previous games, all, co all competitions. Won 11 straight home games, all competitions, losing only twice at home all season. And they've won uh, in nine of their previous 11 home games by at least two goals, all competitions. So, yeah, this is a situation where... City really should smash, and that concerns me because they really haven't been playing up to snap. Now, how to approach Spurs is much like how I think we should approach Man United, but which but with much better options, and that's uh to use uh to use Loris and GPP, hoping that Man City just don't do well enough to uh, blow him out of the water from 3.6k. Uh, now you can also rock some Trippier. The fact is that City are just really bad against crosses and set pieces. Uh, so I don't mind Trippier. Maybe even a little bit of Danny Rose. Uh, as you can see, they allow. So this isn't something to shy away from. Even from that salary at 4.5k, I really don't hate it. Um, now, Erickson's someone you're probably going to want in your, at least a GPP uh, exposure this slate simply because, like I said, City have been so bad against uh, crosses, but I don't even mind him uh, in this uh, midfield cash option here at 7.2K. He's way too cheap this slate. Uh, now, in terms of the rest, it'll be interesting to see if Deli Ali's playing. If he's not even on the bench, feel free to rock some uh, Sun or maybe even Lucas Mora. I really do like Cisco, uh, uh, Sis Sissoko, Cisco, Sissoko a lot. Uh, he's been playing a much better in 2019. So a really improved player. Don't be sleeping on him as a one-off in GPP for only 3.8K. And up front, if you want to use Lorente, you can. It's definitely not my favorite uh, forward option of the slate by any means. But I can think of worse for 6.4K. Uh, for example, a certain guy named Lukaku uh, for a very similar salary. So yeah, I'm just not interested. And uh, in terms of uh, City... Uh, very interesting to see how they line up as well. Um, I'm not spending up a keeper, but uh, where I'll probably be looking is uh, into the midfielder here with either Mares or Sané and making sure I get a piece of uh, those crosses coming in on Man City at home. So yeah, uh, final score here, I will say uh, probably a City win. Let's say 2 nothing Manchester City win. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, Spurs will be lucky to score more than once, or to score at all even, and I can't see City not scoring more than once. So yeah, let's say a 2 nothing City win. So yeah, that's uh, that's the video. A really quick one for everyone. I hope uh, you've enjoyed Champions League up to this point. Uh, make sure to get at me with any questions. Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites and message boards. Uh, Rotopros.com. Get over. Check us out. Articles. Top right hand corner. Drop down. Check out all of our free contact uh, content. Excuse me. Like. Subscribe. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Hopefully, see you at the top. Take care.